Hello friends, this video on weather, climate and adaptations part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us look at another adaptation of the polar regions that is the adaptation of penguins. I'm sure all of you know what is a penguin. I mean how a penguin looks like. So it's a bird and it looks somewhat like this as you can see on the screen. And you again, you do not see penguins in our surroundings. At least in India, we do not see penguins. But again, they are present in such extreme cold regions. Now you look at the body of polar bear, the way the body is the way they have so much of fat inside their body, they have so much of thick fur. So it is very difficult for these animals to survive in hot areas. So in penguins, they also have thick fatty skin and due to the presence of this fat, it provides warmth to their body. So it keeps their body temperature quite high. They are also white in color. The same reason white color will mix with the white background which is the color of the snow and that's how it will help them to catch their prey and also protect themselves from their predators so that nobody can catch them. They prefer to stay in groups. Now if you ever get a chance to visit a polar region or if you have ever seen uh, these kind of uh, penguins in, in your TV mostly in Discovery Channel and all they many times they they show different types of animals so you will always observe that these penguins they always stay in groups a lot of penguins together you know why because if a lot of penguins are there together it provides warmth I'll give you a simple example have you ever noticed that if there are just 10 people inside a big bus you did not feel that hot or you really do not feel uh, very you know congested but if inside the same bus instead of 10 people there are 50 people what happens every human being is radiating some amount of heat some amount of heat is generated from everyone's body now when there are 50 people instead of 10 a lot of heat gets produced and therefore you tend to feel hot inside that bus so the same thing holds true in this case also when they stay in groups it, it generates heat and that's why it helps them to stay warm webbed feet if you have ever observed the feet of penguin so it, it is like uh, like how the ducks for ducks also they have webbed feet where the fingers are not separated from each other they are, they are like kind of joined to each other that is called a webbed feet and these webbed feet help them to swim with a lot of power because for swimming also you need some special features so that's how they swim with their webbed feet streamlined body again streamlined body help them to reduce the resistance of the water while swimming and therefore they can swim comfortably they can fly under water this is a very special characteristic of penguin so they can swim in water that is one thing because of their streamlined body and webbed feet but they can also fly under water that's amazing right and do you know how do they do that that's because of their wings which are shaped like flippers so just look at their wings they are like flippers so they help them to swim even under water and you will be amazed to know that they can actually fly at a rate of around 15 meters per hour. So that, that's quite pretty good. So that's how these uh, penguins are adapted to the polar regions again. So let's look at the adaptation of some aquatic animals, some animals which always live inside the water. So the best example would be to talk about fishes. Fishes, they always live in water. So let's see how do their bodies adapt so that they can live inside water so that they do not need any air. So they have gills, the most important organ because gills help them in exchange of gases like how do we respire how do what do we breathe in so for breathing we make use of our nostrils correct and then we have our lungs where the exchange of gases take place so we need oxygen we take oxygen through our nostrils similarly in case of fishes gills are those organs which help in respiration so they take oxygen which is in dissolved form in water through their gills so these gills are present in all the fishes but when you talk about uh, various type of fishes different fishes have different structures so some of them might have elongated body like what how you see in this case so quite elongated body while some of them might have a very big tail some might have different mouth sizes some might have different orientation 
so these changes in the structure of fishes are as per their specific habitats so it is not necessary that all fishes will have exactly the same structure on the screen itself you can see different fishes and they look so different from each other but some of the basic things will remain the same for all of them because one thing is in common to all of them that all of them live in water now depending upon whether a fish is living in a pond or a river or an ocean there might be certain changes in its structure and habits like some of the fishes might be living in slow moving water so the way they swim might be different from those which are living in fast moving waters correct so similarly some of them might be living at the river bed so at the bottom of the river whereas some of them might be living uh, with the tides so depending upon their habitats their behavior and their structure might also change but here i am discussing the common features which are common for most of the fishes so gills is one of them because it helps in respiration streamlined body so streamlined body is uh, what do we mean by streamlined body like uh, have you ever noticed that the structure of the aeroplane so aeroplane is able to fly because it has a specific shape of its body where the front and the end it is like kind of narrow and the middle part is quite wide so this shape of an object helps to reduce the friction of the medium or the resistance of the medium for example the cars the vehicles which run on road so they are also shaped in a streamlined way so that it helps to reduce the friction which is provided by the surrounding air similarly the fishes their body are streamlined so that water friction can be reduced and they can swim in an easier way fins and tails so if you see the fishes have tails they have fins and how do these fins and tails help the fishes they allow their movement through water in fact the tail it controls the direction of movement like when they want to turn right or left so that change in direction is facilitated by the tail they are very fast swimmers and being fast swimmers it help them to catch their prey so what do they eat so they eat tiny organisms uh, inside the water maybe some small uh, insects which are living in water or sometimes big fishes eat the small fishes so if they are fast swimmers they will be able to catch their prey pretty easily thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again